Well, thank you very much. I, several, several months ago, I got this email from this guy here, and I said, well, <laughs> how did he find me? And um, so he invited me to come, and, and, and he invited me to, and that made me dig out a whole bunch of papers that he has written with uh, several people on coordination dynamics. And uh, I, I wrote a kind of a, an analysis or my own look at, at what he was doing, because I had to try to understand it really for myself. About four or five days ago, he said, you know, the, you have this interesting model that you created with Susan Peary on the growth of mathematical understanding. How does it change? And it's, a, it's a, again, that's a kind of a dynamic in and, a, in and of itself. And so I went through and prepared a, a session that allows you to look at uh, some kid's work. I've, I've been away from that for a quite a long time, so to gather the right, the, the right tools for doing it uh, was not in the, in the cards. But I hope this will go interestingly for you and, um, and maybe make some ties to, in fact, some of the other work that's been gone, gone on here today. I've certainly learned a lot from it. I think one of the important things about thinking about using action in learning mathematics is not a new phenomenon. And I, I've, you'll notice I go back to John Dewey and, and his suggestions for teachers, and in fact, worked with teachers in doing this development. Uh, Brownell, a mathematician, uh, wrote Jolly Numbers. I, I'm not sure, he might have even been from Berkeley, if I'm not mistaken, in the, in the 30s and 40s. And you'll notice the, uh, it is the, in the living mathematics uh, uh, series. The person to whom I would like to call perhaps the most attention is uh, Zoltan Dienaz and, and Golden, his partner in this particular uh, part of his work. They, they did lots and lots of things, multi-base arithmetic blocks, red blocks for integers you studied, like red was negative, black was positive, and you would throw some on the table and see what kind of a number you got and, and then found all kinds of patterns in those numbers. So again, this is really about searching for pattern and I think that again fits, it, it's a kind of dynamic in and of itself. The, the, the little thing at the bottom here, the, it's, he called it a mathematical square dance. And where I, where I s s saw him discussing this was at a um, na na National Council of Teachers and Mathematics Conference in 1971 in, Phil in Philadelphia. Um, and at, as I was re registering or at, at my hotel, the very famous geometer, perhaps the most famous contemporary geometer, he's now, now dead or was uh, alive a few years ago, uh, I always called him HMS Coxeter, but I called him His Majesty's Ship Coxeter. <laughs> Um, he was standing there, so I told him that I was a great fan of his, having read a lot of things that he'd written. But the interesting thing was, Dean spoke about this. This is called enacting a mathematical square dance. And there are four students hold ropes joining them in a square, or pro at least a, 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 a circular arrangement of four people, but a square. Then they do things like, well, that person and you change places, but these people don't. And then you rotate to the left, and where are you now, and what's going on? And, and in fact, it's a, it's a, what you enact is a, is a, um, is a group. Uh, uh, you enact group theory. These are eight-year-olds that are enacting group theory, or maybe ten-year-olds. And and his second stage for them is to draw pictures of the group, how the group was, and what, and the, each person drew their own pictures, of course, and then they uh, compared those pictures and, and tried to put them all together. And then he, the, the third thing, the third time he met them, he said, now write a letter to your grandma that tells what you did. So you, in your own words, 
say we danced around in a circle or we changed places or those kinds of things. And finally, he said, uh, write the shortest letter you could that would give the person all the information they needed. In other words, kind of a, a kind of write a, a, a little mathematical precy on, on what you've done. And the interesting thing, I mean, you'll notice I have Deans and Coxeter. Coxeter comes up to the podium and says to Deans, that's very interesting. <laughs> and the, how did those little guys think about that? And, and Dean said, they discussed the thing, and he said, oh, gosh, I, I'm, I'm sure they would be able to do that easily. Uh, I'm not sure they were, but at any rate, I just want to lay this out. This is 1971, so, and this is very much uh, a, a, a physical action approach to doing mathematics, although it's quite different from the physical action doing mathematics that, that, that you've been engaged in, and, and uh, particularly Anna has in, been engaged in. I'll just try it. Whoop, wrong, wrong button. There's many other people, of course, that have done this kind of work. Caleb Gatteno is, uh, is famous uh, for the colored rods, and I just, I just heard someone talking about using colored rods uh, in, 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 with teachers. Uh, and, and then at the University of Alberta, I was working with a person named Doyle Nelson, who was a, a mathematics educator and a Piagetian, really. And he had some wonderful things with children doing, dividing up con continuous material, cookie sharing, for example. And I, at, at Berkeley, in fact, in 1981, at a, at a conference, I, uh, talked about watching this little girl and they were sharing, she was to share cookies. And uh, can, you, can you share these cookies with, with, fi with five people? There are, can you five, share five, excuse me, share five cookies among two people? And can't do it. Four people, two, three people, can't do it. Uh, two people. One person. In other words, th this is th this is uh, a kind of thing that 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 happened in this kind of research frequently with other things. For example, load. There's 12 cars and there's three ferries going across the river, and they had actually had a, 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 a the boats were there and they put the things in, and the, it turns out there were uh, let's see. Five of one color, four of another color, and three of a third color. And they were to put them so that they would have equal loads on the boats. And of course, the, the, the color was a distraction in this thing, so it was a very interesting phenomenon. And there's many other things here, parking lot problems, etc. I don't want to get caught up in that too long. Of, of course, I've men mentioned Richard Skemp and I mentioned my colleague at the University of Calgary, Bruce Harrison, and they've done a lot of work on inst instrumental learning versus uh, relational learning. And, and, the f and the, they have a whole bunch of physical materials. Um, Les Steffi and his group on ordinal and cardinal number reasoning using concrete materials and physical actions to, and these are with five-year-olds to what have you, and, and Piaget, of course, with Inhelder and Zisminska and children's ge geometrical knowledge. Can you fold this into two equal parts? Well, it's, not, it's no problem at all. What happens if you fold it again? How many pieces do you think there will, how many parts will there be? Can you do this? This is now about six or seven year olds, three, four, etc. The interesting phenomena here is he would get down to here, and this is maybe eighths, and he said, could you take it any further? And they usually could do it two folds. And how do you get back to eighths or whatever? They, they, they opened them up and looked and counted to eighths. And they, so this is the kind of work that was going on on this and then, and, and I'm sure it would have been interesting to see uh, some, of, some of your uh, 
dynamics in action here. And then his idea was, how, far, how many folds would you have to make to get back to, back to one? And those kinds of things, those, those kinds of rich questions that are available. Oh, I guess I went the wrong way. Well, I, this is the model that, that uh, uh, Dora asked me to uh, speak to. And it's a model that uh, Susan Peary and I developed in the 80s. Um, Susan was at, at various universities, particularly Oxford, when she and I worked on this. Sorry, it's on its side. My, my daughter tried her best to put this on so it looked decent. But, uh, and I'll, I'll, you don't have to read it by turning your neck because I'll give you what's in the thing. But the idea here is that it's about how does understanding change? And you, everybody comes in with their primitive knowing. And that may be a lot, it may be a little, may be different. Every child is radically different. And primitive does not mean some kind of uh, hopeless state or anything like that. They, they have lots of things that they bring. The, the first ring is image making and uh, I, it's been spoken about when we've looked at actions. People just act at the beginning, try to figure out what, I, what I'm supposed to do with some particular material. Uh, and, and I'll just jump now to the next slide and I can come back to this. But the other, th other things to n notice, Susan and I have suggested there is kind of a, almost a boundary between making images that is playing around with it until you try to understand what the material, how you work with this material, and then uh, leaping to having an image, oh, I see how it works, uh, stage. And then you, play around and you see properties of that and then you but now there's a big jump over to formalizing and it's a jump of two kinds the the, the first inner part c consists in what one might think of as Piaget's well it, it really comes from von Glasersfeld's uh, uh, book on uh, Piagetian uh, thinking on mathematics and the, his kind of symbol was par, P-A-R, perceive, act, ref, uh, reflect on that action. How does this change me? Or how am I changed? And it's almost like the little baby who uh, does two things. He's just going like mad. How, I, oh, how am I changed, it, uh, has been said. And, and I think that that's one of the key uh, one of the key things. But the, the, Susan and I thought of, for school mathematics, two other elements of this is, are expressing, and that, that is saying what, you've, what you think you've observed, and explaining. Can you, and by explaining, I think, if, if you think of it at school, all of these experiences I have was, have been in classes of, well, between 20 and 40 people, I guess, it, in various schools in Edmonton and Calgary, where my granddaughter lives. So I've been to her, her schools as well. But the, the key idea is that uh, explaining means I'm trying to insert myself into this group. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm giving you where I'm standing, where am I standing now. The next level and I'm going to think I'm going to switch. We're, we've, property noticing means that you have this image in your mind and then you say, oh, I can do something more with it. I can change from one to another and you'll see this in the, some of the examples I have later. Um, or it's, uh, and we'll, you can see that even it, it, it impacts the things that the uh, doors, the, the students that door, door works with, with the uh, MITP. The, the, the big jump I find for younger kids is formalizing. And the math educator at Michigan, Maggie Lampert, did a lot of studying of this. And she had kids justify. 
and there was here are the here are the things in this class that you have to follow if you're going to be and then you person a stands up and says well here's here's the what i think and then somebody stands up no 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 that's wrong because you you haven't done this and she said this got into a lot of difficult circumstances in classrooms because kids would actually be crushed by somebody telling them they were wrong. I think in a group like this probably all of us might be a little crushed if somebody said, oh, you're wrong and here's the reasons. But I, th I think the kids w were crushed by it. But formalize formalizing takes a different way of looking at it. Explaining is, this is how I'm thinking now. Justifying is, I'm, I'm cognizant of the rules of mathematics in this classroom and I'm going to try to follow them, which is a different uh, thing. All of, rather than generate what you, what you see mathematically, you're going to try to follow it. And then the next jump is to observing and that is doing single proofs or, or uh, using, uh, using logic and proof kind of mathematics. So these are there are levels of understanding. I don't know if they should be in this kind of order exactly, but I, I, it's, it's that way. The, the last one is structuring, and that can either be Euclidean geometry, and that has taught in grade 10 when I was, when I was a kid. Um, you tried to prove all these theorems. In fact, our, our um, teacher who was a very strange man. I grew up in north, northern Minnesota, in a mining town, and he, he, got, he was the god of the school. And he, we had to, to do three or four hours of homework a night or something to, whoop, that, bad. OK. Um, but the, the notion of developing a set of interrelated theorems is a new kind of, a new kind of game. Um, and then the last one that, that we had, and I think I will go back here for a moment, the outermost, outermost ring really is jumping out of what you're studying now and inventing something new to study. And in fact, we've had lots of good examples of inventing new, new things that you haven't done previously, even in this group. And you could say it's, and we use the term inventizing. You are inventing new things to do. Where am I for time? Yeah, I'll, I'll get, okay, keep, keep, keep me informed. Um, for example, like developing, um, well, this is where I've changed, I changed this, but I'll go on. For example, the new mathematics was the, the, the generation of complex numbers, for example, they, they were, not known, <coughs> and they, well, they were literally invented, I think, in Ireland, in fact, um, and, or Mandelbrot set or something like that, which, which is, is in a, a, a different dimension. In fact, there was a big argument that he had and, uh, in, in the mathematics intelligence or in uh, the, his opponent said, I, you don't, this, that's not mathematics, you're getting grants and that's not mathematics. Uh, um, and he said, well, I don't know enough about it to, to even generate a theorem and write, and write a proof of it. Uh, and, uh, so that's, the, that's a, an interesting feature of it. But let me go on. I'll just quickly go through these because we've talked, I've just talked my way through them a little bit. The general ideas, as I said, are, uh, com come from Piaget and, and, uh, and von Glasersfeld. And then we've added these two, expressing and explaining. And I, I'm, I'll just talk to the last point for a moment. This expressing and explaining underlie the reasoning action in, of students observed as exhibiting image making, image having, or property noticing. This is, the, you don't know 
much about this field yet. You're exploring it. You're exploring it in your own terms. Probably that comes with image making and property notice. You just try it. You'll see, and you'll see in the examples that I give, give in a moment of this feature. Image having means that the student mean, uh, developed a means of working meaning, meaningfully with the ideas they've been playing with. And I see what's going on here, and we'll, we'll see some good examples of that in a, in a bit, as well from uh, your research door and, and, uh, and other places, as well as ma the mathematics classrooms. Property noticing is informally noticing pr patterns of the image you have, what, what extensions of the patterns, extensions of those ideas, and students are able to express and explain their thinking to others. We, we it didn't come up on the, my daughter's alteration of my, of the model, but there is a, we had a thick line between image making and image having. It's a new stage. You're playing around with this thing, and then you say, oh, I see what's going on. A good example are, it comes from your, uh, the, your work with a couple of girls, and we'll see examples of that in a, in a minute. A student who is formalizing is realizing that, that his or her ideas works, have a works-for-all character. It'll, and. They, they, if they're at a class where justifying is important, they will try to use the mathematical uh, ideas to, to support their argument. There's a don't need boundary between observing and structuring, and this can be likened to the difference between focusing on a problem and focusing on a system of ideas. When you're, when you're focusing on a problem, you're solving it. And when you're focusing on a system of ideas, uh, there, there's, it's upon making a new whole of some kind. At the beginning of the other paper that I wrote, I focused on the, for the first page and a half on pattern. Uh, what are the patterns that, that occur? And I had an extended quote from Michael Ataya, the f famous British mathematician, uh, who uh, a field medal winner, etc. And he said, well, "I don't do problems. I look for patterns. A, pr a problem demands an answer. Uh, a, a pattern d demands my doing something with it, elaborating, changing it, doing work with it." And at, at, and uh, a second person I'm quoting is Lynn Steen, who was the uh, president of the Math Association of America at the time. He came to a Canadian math ed study group in, in Winnipeg, Canada, and um, he sat in on our geometry working group. We have four-hour working groups each day to talk about some topic in mathematics that, that might be changed. The Canadian mathematics study group is made up of about half mathematicians and half math educators and teachers. And Steen said, well, mathematics is really about all the patterns there are. And you've, we've seen a lot of the patterns this morning, I think, that are wonderfully mathematical. And here's inventizing, me thinking up a whole new. Uh, set of mathematical ideas. Here's, uh, do you want to hold up some of the th things that I, uh, hold up several of them so they see. The, the group that w was working was using these materials to build various things. There's Two units worth of ones, halves, fourths, eighths, and sixteenths. Why two units? Because um, my daughter had a teacher 
uh, grade four teaching her who said, my daughter said, well, I think three-fourths plus one-half would be one and one-fourth. And the teacher said, there aren't any fractions uh, beyond one. Uh, and so this was, this just was simply, that now there, you know there's an infinite number of fractions, if you will. And this is one of many such kits that I, that I and my colleague at, in universities in both elementary and high schools have used extensively in a lot of different ways. Some tasks on fractions were find and tell about a fractional number constructed using your kit. Bigger than three-fourths and less than one. We called this a, um, it was called the missing fraction mystery, what the kids called it. Uh, but th this is a variable entry prompt. Everybody can jump in and, into this game and, and do something that it is to them useful and mathematical. And nearly, I would say, 95 plus percent of the students do do something of that nature. Or find three things at least you know about three-fourths. And you'll see an interesting example of that. Bringing forth a fraction world with others in various spheres of behavioral possibilities. This is a uh, Maturana's notion of what knowing is about. Bringing forth a, a, a world with others in various spheres of behavioral possibilities in, in, in our terms, including mathematics. It should say with others, in fact, because it's not something you do alone. Let's take a look at some examples. These, these are two girls who are low achievers in mathematics in school. In fact, one was uh, a very tall girl because she was in, in, uh, eligible to be in grade five, but for mathematics she came back to the grade three classroom. And she seemed to be okay with that, I guess. But um, Megan is shy, and there's the story. She lays down th three fourths pieces, and on top of them she lays out one half and three sixteenths pieces. She writes one half plus three sixteenths on a, a separate sheet and announces this to the class. And the teacher, and uh, I don't know what possessed him to do it, it was me uh, at that time, uh, says, how did you think of that? And she smiles, sits there for nearly a minute, and then she says, it's 11 sixteenths. In other words, the class cheered for her. And they all yelled, it's exactly one sixteenth less than three fourths. So this is, this is a, really an affirmation for her. And in fact, start generator on the way to be doing something different with mathematics. It is, was almost like the baby pulling on the, uh, on the ropes. Her partner, Tara, was the one who was, was the, the person who was a, a grade five student. She laid out a half and one eighth piece on on top of three-fourths pieces and said, that works. And the teacher comes over and Tara asks, can I take it home? I want to do missing fraction mysteries with my sister. She's in grade six. The sister was a high achieving student. So she came home and she'd say, uh, a fraction is missing. And the, the, her sister didn't know what to do. So she came back to report to us, I, f I finally fooled my sister. <laughs> So I th I th what I guess I want, I'm saying these things that seem a little bit off to the side, but I think in this case, mathematics is, is more a part of living than doing uh, some pre-stated uh, pre uh, activity. Now, We'll see a little more of Sandy here. He's a very, very gifted, the most gifted, good, thank you. The, very, the most gifted student I've, I have observed, and in fact, he was in grade three then, and he, in grade nine, he went to the university in, in, to study mathematical physics, so uh, it, it, he continued on his track. Now, here's, here's his response. He, the other people had made responses to this. This was, 
it's greater than three-fourths and less than one. And, you, and you'll notice the kit over there went out up to sixteenths. There were the half fractions up to sixteenths. Thirteen sixteenths, seven eighths, and fifteen sixteenths. And now Rerai, who is a kind of a neat little kid, I think you're wrong. She, he, Sandy would never have thought Rerai would best him at anything. You missed one, fourteen sixteenths, which he had made right in front of Sandy. Sa now look what Sandy says. Ah, he's just showing off. That was just an, that's that old equivalent fractions trick. <laughs> this is a grade three student saying, you know, his, his father was a, a computer scientist and his mother was a medical doctor. So he had, and he worked, a, his father worked with him a lot, so he probably knew all this stuff. For, the term equivalent fractions had not been used in class yet. And, and, the, the next day, the, the students were working on things, and, uh, and in the, this teacher that they had was remarkable. She had students go to the board to show off work they wanted to do, and, or were doing, but you had to answer questions, if, by, or anybody could come up and talk to you in, in an orderly fashion. So here's, he's doing a, he said, I'm going to do five-fourths. And five-fourths, one, one-half, one-fourth, one-eighth, one-sixteenth uh, were the things he put in a table. Now you'll notice he has, he's trying to make five-fourths with one and two-eighths, one-half and three-fourths, etc. He had 15 of these or so. And this is clearly, yes, you, when you have this, you have, he's, he's saying, I know, I know there's a lot of them. I'm trying to get them all, but he's trying to get them all, and you'll notice he's made this table, and he go deliberately says, I use this table because I want to be able to look back and see if I've, uh, I've done one twice. Disaster strikes. This teacher allows visitors to come up. And Andy tries to, Andy just go t talks as fast as he can about what he's doing and, and uh, they don't understand what he's doing. The boys ask uh, Mr. M, the, the, my research assistant, and the boys erase some of that Sandy's work. He's very upset, moves away, but st starts doing something. He was standing like this next to the board, writing like in, in that fashion. But then it's a new day. The, te the research team talks with Ms. T and she's already talked with Andy. Later the team looks at a video of the board, but Andy has written so small that we couldn't pick up what he had written and we couldn't see even when we went up and looked. He, uh, the next day Mrs. T suggests that Andy make a three-fourths table like he did yesterday. <laughs> which She thought it was three-fourths, it was five-fourths, but he said he hasn't finished his yesterday table for five-fourths but agrees to do it. Fifteen minutes later, he came back. There, I got them all. I got all the, all the combinations of those numbers that make three-fourths. That would be, whoop, uh, and you'll see the table in a minute here. She said, you worked really fast. I can't believe it. There is his table. And uh, you can't see all of the features of it. But he starts at, uh, at 12, uh, I'm trying to see even myself. Oh boy, I'll look at my own. 12 16. 12 16. Yeah, it's 12 16. So I, I was calculating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 12 16, 14 16, uh, 1 eighth and 14 16. And you can know uh, th uh, 3 eighths and the appropriate number of sixteen, four eighths, and the appropriate number of sixteenths until he gets down to six eighths, and and that's he has three. He's got three fourths, so he can't add any add anything. And then he moves over to fourths, and he goes back and starts again. And the the point I want to make is you. He says that's for all, and the and the and I and it's organizingly generative. This this will gener this he has a pattern that'll generate these things. 
he doesn't even, I think he really doesn't even care if he's left something out. Uh, because I know they're all, of, I, I now have, the other one he didn't know. He, he said, I, I, I want to do them all, so I have to keep looking and checking. I don't have to check anymore. I've got, I've got it. Here's the way to do it. So it was a patterned action that has a just justifiable, uh, justifiable character. Now, I, what, what time am I doing for time? I like a couple minutes, three, oh, four minutes. Okay, we'll get to it. Uh, let me see. I'll just skip over some of these. I want to. I want to uh, t talk about a, a, a no another two terms we've been, uh, generated. Invoking the observer prompts the student to fold back. Whoever's talking to me folds back to a lower a lower level of of the of the of the understanding uh, pattern. Provoking an observer teacher or some occurrence prompts the student to move up to an outer level or a higher ring. And there's We've also said, talked about folding out. You go to some other aspect of mathematics that you know and notice it's related to the one you're working on. The, there are teaching moves that are associated with this as well, and I don't have the time right now to do very much more with them. You, you can look on the uh, on the, uh, the for the papers on the website, I guess that we'll have. Here's the, now we're going to uh, Doors work. Students using specially designed trackers on the screen. You don't, I don't have to tell you that. In research, the researchers can be seen as active observers in that in, in various ways both prompt and allow for a panoply of student actions reflecting on these actions. And I'm taking this really from uh, Maturana's book, Autopoiesis and Cognition. He has, a po he has kind of a poem. Everything said is said by an observer. Uh, the observer speaks to another observer who may be himself, and etc. So, and so this is a, 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 a key idea. Bringing forth a world of significance with others in a sphere of possibilities. Also matches with in, in embodied design literature. Here is one of the, here's kind of a little story that, that I wrote in, in the other paper I did. Uh, this is Sienna. Sienna was a, a low achieving student. She moves the, pe the, the left paddle and the right paddle many, many times. In other words, she's just literally, li literally just seeing how does this work. Occasionally, the screen flashes green. And she doesn't, she, she's kind of satisfied with that because you're supposed to see green. But uh, the, of course, then, then she does the following. She moves the la left paddle up to s some distance and fixes it. Then moves the right paddle until the sc screen flashes green and then adjusts it a little bit and it's green. So that's, and repeats the left right, left right moves for a different set of positions. In other words, I see what's going on here. One minute, okay. We'll finish this down. Sienna now attempts to coordinate her moves of left and right hands, moving them both at the same time. She expresses this using the language she used in the previous left, uh, left fix movement. In other words, she's not doing the fi left fix, but she's trying to move them together and, and have it come up green, which she was spottily uh, 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 capable of doing. The researcher, Dr. Turninich, did I get that correct, is curious about her coordinated motion strategy and asked if she could make a rule for what she was doing. And you'll notice she's sort of stunned by this. She doesn't even know what a rule would be. And she, this interrupts her, flusters her. She returns back to the old style. In other words, I better, I better go work with what I have now in this circumstance. I'll quickly finish this up here. She, after she's done this for a while, she starts doing it and she, oh, I can do this now. 
and she expresses right is faster than the left this time announcing a strategy and follows to make green screen she knows that with both paddles starting at the bottom she must move the right paddle faster than the left to make greens green screens in other words she expresses what she's doing well and the strategy works for many green screens she appears to know that two to one patterns applies both to the final the final relative heights of the paddle but it, as well the two to one ratio for the speed she notices that the, she knows a new feature of the thing in other words a, a property of, of the image that she has I'm going to just quickly do this uh, because this is another interesting one and again I'm not a strong student and now we, we have a co a co enactment with door holding the left tracker and Shani holding the right tracker this results in uh, this res well I don't know what coordinated what process of generating green screens with DA fi fixing the left tracker Shani moving the right tracker until a green screen appears in other words uh, here's a here's a here's what'll work here for me Dor challenged this with various fixed level and Shani responded by generating the green screens remembering an earlier question about the number of green screens that that uh, door had flipped to her it could really be infinite she said and of course it could be if you put that if you put the uh, bottom screen of the, the bottom track a little bit up and you have to just have to double that and there's an infinite number of those combinations available on the screen and she I don't know if she would have put it in those words but I, I think that that's interesting now the other in, just one more interesting feature and then I'll just shut up uh, DA hands off the left tracker to Shanhin and now she's controlling them both he door lightly guides puts his hands on her wrists and guides her wrists at first Shani seems to follow Dora's guidance whatever he's whatever he's doing I'll, I'll do it for him. I'll do it with him it's sort of what the sense I have in, in reading the manuscript really that I took this from but she's noticed the height comparative comparisons left and right and she noticed that both the right was higher than the left tracker and the right had to move faster the right goes up two spaces when the left goes up one so this is this another announcement of a of an I, of, of a mathematical idea one sees that at first DA and Shani coordinated left and right actions door would give a left you you're on to ret return the serve and but now now it this is Dora's comment I think or, or Turninich's Shani takes the leading role <laughs> and maybe this is simp as something as simple as I'm pulling <laughs> I'm pulling Dora's hands along I'm not being guided by Dora any longer I'm, and leads to a connected process I think I'll just stop there uh, and we have more work to be done today thank you Any questions? Silence. Okay. This might be somewhat of a math ed insider question, but how do you relate the your model to the um, von Helis model? Yes, it is very much. It's it's like the von Helis model, but but with more. Yeah. It's really focusing more on action than the type of mathematics. Right. I think that this ours is focusing on what what kind of action is going on here what's the product of that action which is different the Van Hela's st start with uh, a, a bottom level for example you could imagine if we cut the screen in half and then tipped that thing on its side and stuck it in the middle uh, in the middle of a, a thing that big the, the person would say I don't think that's a half anymore because it doesn't look like a half in other words the looks like isn't a, looks like isn't a good enough mathematical property and then the next level is you in in fact do do physical activity and then you do logical activity in in the Van Healy uh, scheme of things and, and there's many other things great great work done by uh, Van Healy and his wife for that matter I think oh, I wasn't 
crazy seeing some some residents there. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? I was very much interested by these uh, uh, the idea of the invoking, yeah, provoking, yeah. Uh, so the invoking, as I understood it, is you're often asking the child to fold back into some earlier um, model of participation, something they had noticed earlier or yeah. done earlier. Yes. Whereas the provoking is pushing them further to the right, as, as your uh, orientation was, yes. uh, to the outer spheres of the, of the mathematics. Yes. Project. And I, I was curious uh, uh, to, to think of that as a means of, of framing our, our analysis of how the, uh, the tutor, and I also think of Anna's work, how the tutor is steering yeah. the discovery uh, process by sort of selectively pruning and saying, yeah. oh, okay, or maybe she shouldn't go there. How about that thing you did earlier? Yes. So in a sense, putting boundaries on the discovery in, in ways that ultimately will enable her to go the, the path of least resistance, <laughs> so the path towards the concept. Yeah. Uh, I, th uh, I skipped a slide here, and it w it's an important slide that I skipped. Uh, it, it showed her what she was doing, uh, and I, I mentioned a piece of it. She did image making or played around came up with a, a particular image that she could use, by image I mean action pattern really. And, and then uh, Turninich said, can you, can you uh, give me a, a, a rule for that? And she didn't, I think, even know what a rule might mean in, in this circumstance, ne uh, never mind what that rule might be. Uh, and so she was stunned by that and said, well, maybe I really don't get this. I better go back to what I really know, because she had been de dealing with two hands working simultaneously. So I, th I think that it is a reflection on, on she's doing this kind of action. She gets asked a question that she has no idea what to do with. She says, well, I better start over again. Or not really over again, but start with something that I do know. And, and that's, uh, uh, that's an invoking. The provoking occurs, um, well, I'll, I'll give you one example. Uh, it's again back to Sandy. He was working with Mr. M in a closet at the school because of all the classrooms were full and they were working on. And so he had, Sandy had written out a bunch of things with many fractions, halves, thirds, other kinds of things, made a, made a, a, a list across the top. And he started to, to fill in from the right side, as he had done in the, in the picture you saw. And in, in about, oh, five minutes, he had a long string of things. And uh, Ralph Mason said, Sandy, would you, be, would you be worried if I said you're wrong? <laughs> or you, 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 don't have, you definitely don't have them all. And Sandy took all of two seconds to say, Oh, well, I understand. I was, uh, I was uh, fraction welding, starting with smalls and putting them together. You were fraction cutting. <laughs> and, and so that then, then he showed another 20 things that could start from that side. And then they both started wor working on things that got more complicated. And so they, they had this big sheet that, that he had done. But it was, it was really, really unusual, but, but the, is just snap that, yes, I understand, and then he, they're making it up. And just to end what I have to say, Sandy, he was a very short-statured boy at the time. I think he, he didn't, he, he started growing after that. But he came over and poked Mr. Mason. He said, won't it, he, won't it be fun, Mr. M, if, if in the, uh, uh, Oxford English Dictionary, there's a thing to Mason, to laser cut <laughs> fractions, to, to, to Sandy, <laughs> to laser weld fractions. In other words, he, he's capturing this and I, I, owning, it. Uh, owning it and think, and it's like that, the, the little baby saying, I, uh, this, is, this is my place to go. So 
this is a picture of our way of thinking about using this model. It's been used a, a lot by a lot of people, somewhat differently than we thought they would, but it is about can you see different, that when we say levels of understanding, it's misleading really because it's a more or less a continuous kind of and floppy back and forth kind of thing. But uh, I, th I think that that's a, uh, an, a key and interesting idea. Thank you.